It was time something was done. The Roddick Gates clocks, first installed in 1925, haven't worked for decades. It's something that has irked McGill alumnus Dr. Joseph Hannaway from the very first day he set foot in McGill University, back in 1953. So I walked through the gates and I looked up at the tower and I, like, I was there about 8.30 and one clock said 11 and another one said 12 and another one said 1. You know, they were all telling different. I walked around the tower actually look, looking at the clocks and I just put that in the back of my mind that someday I'll look into that, you know. <laughs> 53 years later, I did. <laughs> Hanaway is a retired neurologist from Missouri, a grateful graduate of McGill's medical school. I think that McGill matured me a lot, and I've always felt that I need to, need to give something back to McGill. And here was a chance to do it. When Dr. Hanaway got this thing going with uh, refurbishing and uh, renovating the entire thing, he found in the McGill archives the correspondence between Books and uh, McGill and came to Books, and uh, we met and uh, did a lot of uh, fun work together went to Ottawa to look at the Burke's archives, if we could find something. Burke's recommended a clockmaker in Boston, one of a rare few with the expertise to restore an antiquated clock tower. It had been sort of mangled like most buildings over the years, over the past 60 or 80 years, people had put things in that didn't belong there. Um, there was old equipment in there, inside the tower was sort of dirty and rotting away. A typical mechanical tower clock that does a Westminster chime is a fairly complicated big thing. And the room up there is very, very small. And we just have no idea how it fit in there, but we know something was in there. The space did not work. It was too tight in there. Typically, a mechanical clock would have a room inside the building that was somewhat heated to keep it above freezing and isolated from the weather so no water would come in. So I think the original design of the tower was wrong. And the, behind the clock faces, there's just screens. So literally, the weather comes pouring in there. And I think that that's what happened in the clock. It probably literally rain was pouring on top with all the gears in there and it just stopped. The clocks were removed, sent down to Boston to be cleaned and have an entirely new mechanism installed. The blackened bronze face was restored to its former glory. Now all four clocks will run in sync. They will definitely run like clockwork. Um, it has modern electronics in it. The movements are all synchronized from face to face to face. Um, there's an electronic control that handles the Westminster chime and the hour strike. And there's also a GPS receiver, um, which you can sort of see on the outside. It's like a little uh, dish that keeps absolutely perfect time. So the clock will always have absolutely perfect time. Inside the tower, the original bronze bells have been preserved. And to finish the restoration project, a new copper door. After a year of work, finally the day had arrived. On October 1st, the group of five, Hanaway and his team, met again at McGill to unveil the refurbished clocks and bells. It was a moment Jill McSween, facilities supervisor at McGill, had eagerly anticipated. I think that everybody is pleased. Everybody that worked on it uh, are happy with the result. And um, it's not only our project, but it's going to be also the landmark of McGill and everybody to enjoy. I hope that when the, these bells ring, someone will pause for just a minute and listen and think about something else besides where they're going or where they're coming from. And I think that would be, uh, if that happened, that would be the best legacy I could ask for.